What's up everybody? Rudy Rocks here, back with another one. But real talk, today's topic is heavy man, super heavy. We're diving into a serious and sensitive topic, the mechanisms of death by hanging. It's important to understand the physiological processes involved and I'm not going to shy away from the details. This isn't about glorifying anything, but about confronting a difficult subject with knowledge and respect. So buckle up guys, because this one's gonna be intense. Okay, so first let's break down this fixation. Imagine this, the noose or ligature tightens around the neck, that pressure, it's constricting the airway like someone's squeezing your throat, making it impossible for air to reach your lungs. You know how we need oxygen to survive, right? Well. Without that oxygen supply, your body starts freaking out. Think about holding your breath for as long as you can. Uncomfortable, right? Now imagine that feeling, but times a thousand. Within minutes, your brain's screaming for oxygen and your body's going into panic mode. Your heart's racing, trying to pump whatever oxygen it can to your vital organs, but it's a losing battle. Now, on top of the air being cut off, there's another terrifying thing happening simultaneously. Remember those major blood vessels in your neck? The carotid arteries and jugular veins? They're responsible for carrying oxygen-rich blood to your brain and returning deoxygenated blood back to the heart. But here's the thing. The pressure from the noose isn't just on your airway, it's crushing those vital blood vessels too. It's like clamping off a garden hose, except instead of water. It's your blood flow that's getting completely cut off. This is where things get really dire. Your brain, guys, it's an energy hog. It needs a constant supply of oxygenated blood to function, even for a few seconds. When that flow is disrupted, even for a short period, the consequences are devastating. We're talking about cerebral hypoxia, which is basically brain damage due to lack of oxygen. And as if asphyxiation and vascular obstruction weren't enough, there's a third player in this deadly trio, the vagus nerve. This nerve is like your body's internal control panel running along the side of your neck, regulating crucial functions like your heart rate and blood pressure. But here's the catch. The vagus nerve is incredibly sensitive to pressure. When the noose tightens, it can stimulate this nerve in a very bad way. Imagine hitting the brakes and the gas pedal at the same time in your car. That's kind of what's happening inside your body. This sudden and intense stimulation throws your entire system into chaos. Your heart rate plummets, your blood pressure tanks, and your body goes into a state of shock. This is called vagal inhibition, and it can be fatal on its own, leading to cardiac arrest. Now, in some cases, especially in what's called a drop hanging, the force of the drop itself can be so great, it leads to instant death. We're talking about severe trauma to the cervical spine, which is basically your neck. Imagine the force of your entire body weight suddenly being transferred to your neck. That force can be strong enough to literally fracture or dislocate the vertebrae in your neck. And remember your spinal cord, that bundle of nerves running through your spine. Yeah, a fracture or dislocation can sever that cord instantly cutting off communication between your brain and the rest of your body. Guys, talking about this stuff is never easy, but it's important. Understanding these mechanisms can help in forensic investigations and in raising awareness about the severe consequences of such actions. But even more importantly, I want you all to know that if you or someone you know is struggling, you're not alone. There's help out there, there's hope, and things can get better. Please, if you are struggling, reach out to a mental health professional, a trusted friend or a family member. There are resources available to help you through this. Remember, suicide is never the answer.